So your, your second lesson, ancient settlements, is not like the first one. First one is kind of a short one. We, we were able to finish it within one session. But uh, hopefully for second session, we will take like around, you know, two sessions at least. Uh, not that sure. We'll see according to the way that you understand the lesson, right? Okay, let's go to the lesson. Now, maybe you might have learned this lesson before, but keep everything aside and think freshly. Think that you're a new beginner for grade 10. Likewise, you have a fresh beginning now and start, right? So don't be lazy. Don't be, you know, sleepy. Don't lie on the bed. Get up and sit nicely and listen carefully. Keep a pencil in your hand. Note every interesting, important points that you feel to note. And everything should be imagined like, you know, like a scene, like a movie. You have to imagine everything very nicely. Then only that becomes a story, a, you know, a permanent story in your mind. Right? Okay. Ancient settlements. This is your lesson. Now, from the topic itself, you understand that something regarding to the past about the people's settlements, how they settled. Now, you know that Sri Lanka is a very, very ancient country, right? From the olden days, there were people, there are evidences to prove that. Now, in the last lesson, we learned in the inscriptions and all. So it mentions that people have survived here, foreigners have come to our country, they had different, different, uh, what we call them, talents. They, they were able to carve architecture. Likewise, they had different things. So Sri Lanka is a very famous place for the human habitation. That means people survived here, not today or not yesterday. It's like, you know, 25,000 years ago. 25,000 years ago, people started to live in Sri Lanka, in our country. So we call the modern people, the modern, uh, what we call the modern man is considered as Homo sapiens. So ancient man they migrated from a country from from somewhere to our country passing the rivers passing the mountains the oceans likewise they came to settle in our country right they may be some migrators they may be came accidentally but somehow some people some group of people they came to our country you know passing all this indian ocean and other things so you imagine how a set of people coming accidentally maybe maybe well planned maybe they don't know where they are coming here like they don't know this is sri lanka even so from that time onwards from the time that ancient man started to come to our country they started to you know uh, make their self right okay they, they made their self like this okay well we have come to a place we will have to settle down here for some days for a couple of days like that so when they settle down for a couple of days and when they feel comfortable with the environment when they feel that this place is safer and when they understood that they are able to find food, what happened? They started to make the permanent settlements. For example, I'll make a simple example. You're flying to abroad. You're flying to abroad for your vacation just to enjoy and look around. But when you notice that you really like the climate there and when you realize that the people there are very friendly with you, you feel like, wow, this is the place where I have to come back. I have to settle down here somehow. And you make steps to settle down there. That is how this is also. When they feel very comfortable with the environmental conditions, they started to live in a long time period and they make this country a permanent settlement place. They change their cultures, they change their habits, they change their food habits too because they wanted to survive here. So this history of man, how step by step, step by step, how they, how they developed, how they settled down, what kind of food they ate, what kind of family they spent, what kind of lifestyle they spent is described in this lesson. So it's going to be very interesting that you're going to learn about your ancestors, how they worked out, what kind of a different lifestyle that they lived in the ancient time. That's what we are going to talk in this lesson. So that is the introduction, right? So now you can see the first question here is what are the three types of eras? So under this topic, ancient settlements, we are talking about three specific eras, three specific eras. That is prehistoric era, protohistoric era, and early historic era. 
So we'll be discussing each and every topic separately, right? Listen very carefully. When I change from era to era, your imagination also should be changing according to the features that I'm telling you. Right, let's go to the prehistoric era. Now, prehistoric era means the period that before the past, the period before the past, that is prehistoric. Now, pre means, you know, before. Historic is the past. Period before the past is called as prehistoric era, right? So in this prehistoric era, we can consider the first stage is stone age. So this stone age, you might have heard this, you know, the Gal Yuga we say in Singhala, right? So this stone age was there for a long time. For a long time, the Stone Age was uh, there in our uh, country, right? They were uh, dealing most of their lifestyle with these stones and all, right? And the second stage was, you know, depending on these food items, they were starting to search food because they understood that for the survival, they need these foods, especially the herbal foods and all, right? And uh, in the second stage, people started to develop a little by little, like, you know, uh, they understood that they have to get some permanent settlements rather than moving from one place to another daily because they have a family and it's not that comfortable for them to move from one place to another like each and every time, right? So that period is called as the prehist uh, sorry, uh, prehistoric era, prehistoric era. So I told you two definitions now. So when they ask you what is prehistoric era, make sure you connect both the definitions. Prehistoric era is the period before the past and the time period where people started to make permanent settlements. It's kind of that, right? Like they started to make the permanent uh, lifestyle there, right? So prehistoric era is kind of a uh, beginning part, kind of an introduction part for the Stone Age, because I told you, the first stage is Stone Age. First stage is Stone Age. After Stone Age, prehistoric era comes. So prehistoric era gives you an introduction about the Stone Age as well. Then only the proto-historic era comes. Proto-historic era is the second period, right? So if we talk about the settlements happened here, you know, settlements, I told you, first we can uh, come from the homo sapiens, the man, right? So these homo sapiens are the people started to make these settlements. The, the people who are recent for today for us to discuss this topic because they started to move from one place to another. They, they adopted a very vast area for their survival, right? They had the experience of living in different, different climatic zones. Right, they they they, uh, they were able to make their body body prepared to live in any climatic zone, and they had the capability to collect the food. How did they collect food? So not like today. We like today we do everything from money. Financially we deal. But when you talk about this uh, prehistoric man, they started to gather food. They started to gather food by roaming, by hunting, likewise. So they had to, you know, work hard for that. They had to go everywhere. They maybe sometimes when they are experiencing some new foods, they had become poison. So when it become poison, what happened? They learned something. Okay, this is not good for the consumption. So in, in uh, you know, as a result for that, what happened? They find a medicine. So likewise, only children, little by little, their knowledge increases. They learn. That's what we say. Don't worry when you do mistakes. Mistakes teach you. If you do a mistake, you know that. Definitely, you're not going to do it again. Right? Likewise. So when we talk about these settlements, you have to remember two main places. Two main places you have to remember. So those places are giving you the evidences. The evidences related to the Stone Age. So in our country, our country is really a very historical country. You have, you know, vast kind of historical proofs to show the survival of mankind. So especially to prove that Stone Age people lived in our country, to prove that there was a period called Stone Age in our country, they have first found an evidence that is in Ratnapura. 
right? In Ratnapura, they found the evidence. What is the evidence? The gem mines, especially the gem mines. So even today, Ratnapura is famous for gem. And people, you know, they do that. That's their main business, kind of. So when they found these gem mines, they realized that there were people who engaged in these activities because they saw the stone tools were found around those gem mines, right? Stone tools were found. So if stone tools were found, we can have an idea that people who lived in that particular age, stone age, they had the knowledge of mending stone tools. Not only stone tools, Similarly, they have taken the uh, bones of the animals, the dead animals, maybe killed animals, right? So bones of those animals were taken maybe to make the tools. So those to, uh, bones also were found in that gravel ground with the soil and everything. So these evidences and kind has been surviving in this country. Can you understand? That is one. And the second thing is the Iranamadu formation. So archaeologists, they have found that the Iranamadu formation also have certain deposits related to these periods, certain tools, uh, Stone Age period tools, especially those tools were found, right? So remember the two important places to prove the existence of man uh, for the prehistoric era. What are the two places? Ratnapura Jem Mines and Iranamadu formation. Okay, remember these two places, important. These are important. So when I say important, you know, you click it, you note it down. Yeah, this is important in this part. Up to now, we discussed only this much. In this part, you should remember what is prehistoric era, what are the stages, Stone Age, protohistoric, likewise I told you. Then you should know what are the evidences, the two places to prove. You know that, Ratnapura Red Gem Mines and Iranamadu formation. Then, when we talk about the expansion of the settlements, I told you that the Homo sapien man, he was roaming, he was hunting and gathering. So they had to go from one place to another. Now you imagine some kind of a huge man, not like today's smart fellows, like, you know, they, they didn't have any good shape. They look very giant, you know, uh, and they look very uh, smart, very strong. You can imagine that kind of a picture, you know, like a 3D animated movie. So you can imagine how they gather, you know, food, how they roam as a group, maybe as a single person, but they somehow move from one place to another. You get me? Right. So when they move from one place to another, definitely they come across uh, certain problems, certain, uh, you know, uh, climatic changes, uh, bad weather conditions. Right. So they get the experience of the different climatic zones. Right. So there are a few climatic zones that you should remember. Right, you should remember a few climatic zones, right? So in your book, you know that in page number 10, 11, it's discussing about the climatic zones. They have given the map, right? So just listen carefully, what are the climatic zones? Eight main zones. Number one, the lowland arid zone. So remember, the number one is lowland arid zone. Okay, lowland arid zone, that is the number one. And the next one, second one, Lowland semi arid zone. So now easy to remember two things, only two things lowland arid zone, lowland semi arid zone, arid zone, semi arid zone. Then lowland dry zone. What are the three now? Lowland arid zone, lowland semi arid zone, lowland dry zone. Now three things, you know, three, three uh, environments. Lowland intermediate dry zone. Now a little bit longer. Lowland intermediate dry zone. Intermediate means, you know, like it's intermediate, normal, middle, right? So repeat again. Lowland, arid zone, semi-arid zone, dry zone, intermediate zone. So all are lowland. Then mountainous dry intermediate zone. So before one was also intermediate, intermediate dry zone. Now, dry intermediate zone, but it is not low land. It is mountainous dry intermediate zone. Number five, five environmental zones. 
Now, don't think that these environmental zones were named by the Homo sapiens, the earlier man. They didn't know about these names and all. They just experienced that climatic condition. But later, when archaeologists excavated, they realized they did the researchers and they kept these names by looking at the geographical features. And the next one, lowland, intermediate, wet zone, wet mountainous zone, wet highland mountainous zone. So just have an idea that these, like for example, they used to give these to the uh, MCQ questions. So when you read them, like don't look up and down and think like, where are these words from? Don't think that. You know what? You have confidence, right? First have confidence. That is the best for you. Like other subjects, only history also. Don't get scared for that. If you read the question and you know that where the question is taken from, definitely there you can get the answer somehow. You think a bit. If you know the exact lesson. So when you see these words like lowland intermediate wet zone, dry zone, wet mountainous zone, then you have to get, ah, yes, this is from the second lesson, grade 10 second lesson. Likewise, you have to get a memory of that. Can you understand? So then you can, you know, understand, all right, this is one of the eight environmental zones. And don't go to search more and more and learn about these things. Just learn what is given to you about the environmental zone in your syllabus. Okay, only this much. They didn't tell you, okay, go deeper and learn what were the plants grown, what were the animals living there. No need. Just remember these were the eight environmental zones. That's it. So that's finished from there. That's over from there. So we know that there were eight main environmental zones. Can you understand? So that's about the expansion of the settlements and the climatic conditions. So those two topics are a little bit, you know, we have finished. And when you come to the uh, rainfall levels, when you come to the environmental rainfall levels, you know that there is a difference in the rainfall. You know that our country is really a better climatic condition. Like we can survive very well rather than when we compare for the other countries. You know, some countries are very warm, some countries are very cold. But you know, Sri Lanka has a very good climatic condition. But when you talk about the rainfall, uh, the rainfall differs. You know, uh, sometimes it directly affects the animals and the, also the plants. Because you know that if the climatic condition is not good for the humans, we can move from one place to another and we can survive. But it's not for every animal and it's not for every plant. So the people who lived in that Stone Age period, they also learned to be like these animals and plants. What do, you, what, what do I mean from that? We, they learned to adapt themselves. Now, a simple example, once again. Just think that it's really, you know, really very, very hot in your area. Like, you know, Andhradapura, Mahayangana kind of. It's really warm. You can't bear up that. But still, do you think that, do you feel like, oh, I should shift this place somehow? I have to change my place. And you come to New Orleans. And you say, oh, my God, it's very cool here. I can't survive here. And you again shift. So that's not possible. Moving again and again from one place to another is not possible. We should learn to adapt ourselves for where we are. Another example, if I take, you know, you are coming to a school and you're getting a teacher for your, any subject. Let's tell uh, English or something, right? And you don't like that teacher. She's not teaching correctly. You feel like uh, not clear any explanation. You feel boring. But we can't help, we complain and the uh, management or the principal is not taking any decision. But what should we do? We have to adapt ourselves. You have to take the use of that teacher in some any other way. Or else you have to get adapted with her and you have to be used with her and you have to follow her concepts. That happens, right? That's practical. So similarly, the Stone Age people, they also adapted themselves for these environmental zones. There were eight different climatic zones. They adapted themselves. So just remember that capability, right? That capability. So when these environmental zones are changing, when they face different climatic changes, when there were lack of rainfall and when they were very heavy with this rain and all, they learned few things. They decided to uh, imp you know, improve their technology, improve their thinking ability, likewise. So for example, there are, there, definitely there is a person who found the umbrella. Am I right? Definitely there's a person. So that person might have found the umbrella because of some reason. 
maybe because he saw that it was really heavy raining and he felt like i should do something for this so likewise children if something happen in your life only if you experience something new only you try to do something new as well so history is teaching you a lot of things you have to think more if you just was again like a puppet you can't do anything if you do a mistake you learn something if you experience something new you learn something so stone age people they got so so many experiences they lived in different environmental zones lowland and dry zone you know this wet wet zones so it's a huge difference right dry and wet so they adopted different different food uh, what we call the food consumption during the wet season they had a different style of food consumption during the dry season that's a different meal not only food consumption even the technology so do, if you think like that stone age people are kind of uh, uh, not intelligent it's wrong stone age people is of course the we call the gal yuge but still uh, we say that you know the gal yuge people don't have mind uh, much kind of knowledge and all we say that for the just wordings but it's not that truth because they did something with the stone tools they did something from the stone tools to make use of that so they uh, they are the people who found that yes oysters are also consumable so they had oysters as their food so remember the one of the food item is oysters so these oysters were not that uh, you know not that uh, famous in the lowland dry zone so when that was not there they they uh, found another method to get other foods other animals other uh, plants and herbal things so they started to hunt they started to hunt the uh, deer iguanas so these kind of new new things they were able to find they were able to recognize yes these foods are not poison as we can consume them can you understand so that's how their food style went on is that clear for you all right so now we'll come to the time periods time periods are there so when we tell stone age we can't study the complete stone age that's one thing so you have to take into some kind of time periods right so there are uh, evidences that the uh, you know archaeologists they have found related to this stone age right they have discovered these things especially as i mentioned you earlier this iranamadu formation it's a very important place like you know you have lots of evidences about the man they survived there like you know it says 45 feet from the surface level to the earth there is an area and that area is called the patiraja villa now you can see that picture in your book as well in page number 13 that is you know uh, the pahyangala uh, cave so you know that patiraja villa is also very you know very bottom deep ground kind of place so in there that's in actually hamban totter now note down in your book note down in your book write down you know patiraja vela hamban totter write these names ratnapura write down ratnapura right three places now i told you note down them so those places you have to find and you have to do the map marking because for that exam they don't give you anything out of the book remember that everything is from your book but you have to note them you should see them so learn very well if you are doing if you are doing a self study you know you note down those places separately the world map places sri lankan map places note down them right so patiraj patiraj vela is a place in hambantota hambantota districts belonging to the southern province right so they are that that's one of the another important place for the historical evidences right archaeologists they have found uh, that that place is also proving that man has survived in our country 125000 years ago that is one proof right another thing is uh, some evidences are from bundala bundala vellangoda so mark the place bundala also right bundala vellangoda in there also they have found that evidences are there for the existence of stone age people how can they find with the stone age people survive i repeat it again by the tools by the tools that they have made by certain uh, food items that left over food items by certain bones of the animal we can understand whether an animal is killed or you know uh, dead by itself by observing the bones and all so archaeologists they can do the researches on that 
so they have found that they have hunted animals right so they have involved they have involved themselves in hunting because nowadays we can't find hunting legally right much so you have to understand that there's a, a big confidence for those people hunting is kind of an art you know everyone can't do that you should be very keen you have to be very watchful right you have to be very concentrative and you should know what's your target properly likewise there are some talents so we have to appreciate those people they did it themselves they found their foods themselves right so other than those two places i told you iridamadu formation patirajavela and also the three boondala kesi the other places that you have to keep in your mind pahiyangala so pahiyangala gives you evidences which belongs 38000 years ago kuruvita bata dombalana 28000 years remember the year slightly pahiyangala 38 kuruvita bata dombalana 28 28 38 and the next one kitulgala belilena 15000 years bellam badi pilas 12000 so you know that it's kind of decreasing 38 28 15 and 12 Atanagoda Atulena 10350 years ago Maniamgala 7900 and Sigiriya Aligala 5500 Udamalala 5330 years and Mathota 3800 years Henagahapugala 3370 years so now you can see on the top Pahiyangala that is a cave the cave located in Pahiyangala so look at the diagram please keep diagrams in your mind very well observe the diagram very deeply into that right so this is uh, in kalutara district so mark the place kalutara also right so it gives an evidence that man prehistoric man has lived in that cave 35000 years ago so that shows that pahiyangala cave is belonging to a prehistoric evidence and not only that remember i told you eight climatic zones out of the eight climatic zones keep very well in your mind this pahiyangala cave is belonging to the lowland wet zone what is it lowland wet zone now what are the important points i told you in my explanation pahiyangala cave shows evidence that man survived 35000 years ago in our country and pahiyangala cave belongs to the kalutara district and this cave belongs to the lowland wet zone in sri lanka is that clear for you those are the important points under the time periods now what am i doing for you i'm explaining you the lesson breaking the topics so make sure you have segments in your mind when i'm explaining i told you the three types of periods then i told you uh, what are the stages of the first pre period the prehistoric stone age protohistory then i told you that evidences are found man lived in ratnapura gem mines iranamadu formation then i told you the eight climatic zones everything should be like a picture in your mind your your you know your motivation your concentration should not get break that's the most important thing for any subject then i told you that man survived in these different zones and they uh, they developed their technological knowledge they changed their food habits likewise then we came to the time periods so in the time periods i told you about patirajavela which gives some evidence about the living then i gave you some uh example another places like you know uh boondala and these places so in these places also mainly remember the pahiyangala cave so if they give this diagram in your part 2 question paper don't panic think very relaxedly okay this is a cave where is this cave look at these pictures everything every each and every corner you observe very well then you will remember okay this was in the left hand side of the book below it was written about the cave that is the most important part that's how they are asking question from that description they are giving below the diagram where is this 
what we call location. Where is this location? You can write down. Pahiyangala, Bulat Singhala, in Kalutara district. Okay. What is it? It was the habitation of prehistoric men that who lived 35,000 years ago. What is the significance of this cave? What is the significance? What is the importance? And what is the cave important for? What is the answer to that question? It gives you the information about prehistorical people. They lived in the lowland wet zone. They can ask you three sub questions which carries six marks. So make sure the tiny letters doesn't mean that it's not something you to remember. It means it's very important. They are trying to hide it from you, but you have to be very keen to read it, understand it, and remember it. Is that clear for you? Those three, those parts, time periods, ancient settlements, right? If you have any question, you can drop a text in the chat box, right? So until that, I'll be uh, explaining you and I'll give you a break, a time to read the note yourself as well, right? Okay, now let's go to the key features. Key features means, remember the meaning key means main. Usually we tell key subjects and not. So key features means the main features. What should you remember? So I have break everything. Uh, by analyzing the note, I break to the points, important points you have to remember. Other things I'll be telling you like a story, right? Now I told you this prehistoric man, he settled in our country and, you know, uh, repeat the definition. Okay, definition I'll repeat, right? De definition in the sense, uh, you should remember these definitions. What is the definition you have to remember? What is prehistoric era? Prehistoric era is the period before the past right period before the past where people started to make permanent settlements that is one that is one definition other than that uh, definitions are not much here other than that all the other things are kind of you know the time periods the important evidential places the landmarks where which give evidences those things only you had to remember, right? And when we come to key features, I told you now, the man, they settled in Sri Lanka and they got expanded. You know, for example, I'll tell you, okay, you have a family, right? You have a family, you have two sisters, two brothers. So you are living in, let's tell, Kandy. You're living in Kandy. So if you, you know, if your uh, siblings get married around Kandy, your family is in, around that city only. But just listen, if your sister get married, get married in, uh, let's say, Gaul, brother getting married in Colombo, another one getting married in Trinco. So what happened? You get expanded. You, anywhere you travel, they have to see them at least. So this is how man also expanded their settlements. They got to know that, okay, we are humans. We should be able to adapt ourselves for different environmental conditions. Every time we can't uh, change our uh, what we call the habitat and every time we can't live in the same place we should learn to adapt ourselves for different different environments so that's why they learn to live in those places they learn to uh, use the natural resources that they needed because they know that only this earth the natural things in this earth can help them to survive so like nowadays, earlier, they did not have fast foods and all, right? To go to a shop and make me a, you know, make me a faluda, make me a burger. They can't do that. They have to find their foods. So they went. Just imagine, just imagine you are going for a forest for one day. You have to survive in that forest for one whole day. Definitely, you are going to do a big task there, right? You know, like, like the man was wild in Discovery Channels. So you know how, how he suffers, right? Whatever he say, he will put in his mouth. Have you seen those things? Like what nonsense? I don't know. Whatever he say, he will eat. Because he had to survive, right? And he, he learned lots of things. He learned, okay, this is not good. This taste is not good. It's poison. Likewise, he learned something. Similarly, the ancient man. They go from one place to another. They get the abundant natural resources. They take all the natural resources. They consume it for food. They consume it and see whether it's okay. If it is okay, they take it for their family. They roam around every place, especially the forests, this forest dry zone forest, wet zone forest, every type of 
climatic zone they experience they go to the lagoons they go to the hills right so they they find a place which is preferable for them for living which is a place which can supply all their necessities and in some occasions when they couldn't do something they will take some stones and they make tools for example uh i don't know whether you all know that like if you go somewhere like prahili area or whatever the place where you have some mango trees and if you want to pluck a mango definitely what you do you don't have anything in your hand now so you do you, you take a stone and you hit it or is there that catapult we see in singha like can't remember the catapult right catapult or something so they make it from the sticks and all this, those children in the village they know to make that so they quickly you know okay right wait i'll find a stick they take it they do something and somehow they make a tool can you understand so that's how that man ancient man is not somebody you think like a fool they have the creative thinking ability at the correct instant they know what they should apply whatever i tell take it to your mind and enjoy it right think of them you imagine all those creations imagine those people so they made those tools wherever it's necessary they found the need of water they understood water is necessary for all the uh, what we call living so maybe they didn't even you know wash their stools and urines before but when they see the water they might have understood okay this is something that you can clean ourselves and they took the availability of water as a plus point right and not only that children they were not living like us in you know ac rooms and flats and houses and all they all lived in open areas especially the caves on tree tops likewise very open areas especially in dry zones uh they live okay they live in dry zone but when it comes rain you know they they understood okay when it's raining now we can't live in here we had to find another option and they went for another option also what is that option that is caves that's how they made caves as their habitat can you understand so archaeologists archaeologists they have found different types of cave habitations they have found different types of cave habitations right so let's see whether i have attached the cave habitations here yeah i attached i remember right yes anyway it's there in the tube when you read it only we'll meet it up anyway cave habitations i'll explain you remember these places miniha galkanda boondala patiraja vela that is one single place i'm mentioning Miniha, I think it's here. Miniha Galkanda, Boondala, Patiraju Vela. So that is actually an outdoor camp, right? You know the coastal areas, the maritime provinces, and all we call coastal. What the areas which are closer to the sea, we call the coastal areas. So they are archaeologists. They have found a place called a camp, kind of an outdoor camp, uh, called Miniha Galkanda, Boondala, Patiraju Vela. In Patiraju Vela, it's there. right so we call that particular place as miniha galkand so this is the name miniha man galkand you know stone and the mountain so something related words are there and the second thing pahiyangala batadombalena kitulgala belilena now please note these places are very very important try to do the map marking right and one more thing you all are not babies right you all are 16s 15s so you know what you have to do you do the map marking send me i'll check it no matter no worries so don't think that teach did not say to do this no you should think you should be able to self study and do it you know that the importance of these places right so unfortunately if you have not done any term test you don't know the serious of this exam but you have to take it very serious and work hard right you are getting 10 marks for the map markings of each 10 10 20 marks you can get easily if you know the map markings properly so pahiyangala it's another important place that is actually a low land wet zone cave so this can come for mc equation out of the following what is a low land wet zone cave now take it to your mind low land wet zone so they can give you several answers what are the answers miniha galkand pahiyangala uh, then the aligala in sigiriya bellambadi pilas so like that they can confuse you 
so you should be able to remember okay this is a place pahiyangala bata dombalan that is the place which is a low land wet zone so you have to memorize i'll give you time no worries so remember minihagal thanda boondala patiraju vela is outdoor camping coastal area pahiyangala bata dombalan kitulgala belilena that is low land wet zone caves pahiyangala the bata dombalan kitulgala belilena these three are low land wet zone caves can you understand and when we talk about the low land dry zone caves kotana and aligala in sigiri low land dry zone kotana aligala in sigiri those two places are for low land dry zone then the outdoor camp in low land dry zone i told you outdoor camp in coastal areas now imagine coastal areas the outdoor camps in the coastal areas are minihagal kand boondala patirajwil outdoor camps in the low land dry zone areas are bellan badi pilas remember the name bellan badi pilas you know bellan means oysters right then the outdoor hunting places so archaeologists they have excavated that some hunting areas are there which is closer to the hill side those places are bandaravela and hotten plains bandaravela and hotten plains so those places are kind of you know you are familiar you have heard bandaravela hotten plain so mark it on your map mark the places bandaravela hotten plain now write them down and note them as homework you have work to do map marking that's how we practice little by little and finally when we go to the map marking section that's a different part we'll be continuously doing map markings so there are you these these things will very be, will be very useful this practice will make you perfect there kind of can you understand so key features are like that so what did i tell you the important points in key features man roamed from place to place they got you know adapted themselves to those environments they learned to live in the rainforest they learned to live in the dry zones they understood the use of the stones they understood the value of water and they realized that they have to live in caves when it is raining so they started to make their cave habitations as i mentioned five important locations camps in coastal areas lowland wet zone caves lowland dry zone caves lowland dry zone uh, out uh, outdoor camps and also hunting places so remember those things in this part clear okay listen once again it's a uh, kind of confusing for you prehistoric era okay prehistoric era is the period before the past right so there are two stages belonging to the prehistoric era one stage is stone age this stone age is called as prehistoric era also now prehistoric era has two stages stone age and another period we call it as the uh, proto historic era stone age is also called as the prehistoric uh, era right prehistoric stage or prehistoric era but proto historic era means the second stage in that stage only you know people started to show uh, more you know more interest on the food uh, tools permanent settlements and in the stone age period it's not like that they were like you know uh, like you know not that developed uh, got for tools and all they were doing their work but little by little, little by little they you know improved like you know how we improve nowadays so we never thought we will be doing classes in online we never thought we, students each and every student will have a mobile phone so it's development we call right so likewise only so it's like you know you should have a sketch in your mind like a uh, prehistoric era it's having two stages stone age and also the proto historic so this stone age is also called as prehistoric that's only the difference i think you got it now right so if you want to, we can write a definition also so write down you can write down a small asterisk the star mark and note it the period before the past is 
prehistoric era. The period before the past is prehistoric era. Okay, yeah, I'm shortening the sentence very well. So you don't look for the grammatical thing. You don't look for the grammatical errors because this is like a short note only. We don't want to write everything. Next point, write on. Two cultural stages belong to. Two cultural stages belong to. Prehistoric era. Two cultural stages belong to. Prehistoric era. And how do you write it? You know, like first point you wrote, second point you wrote, and you put, you know, like kind of this way, one stage, the second stage. So the first stage is right down here, stone age, stone age. And within bracket, write down prehistoric era. Write down within bracket, prehistoric era. In this place, write down proto historic. Proto historic. That's all. Now continue your reading. And if you are done with the reading, let me know. Now I talked about the key features. I talked about their uh, how they came, what they started. Like like we did we, we did on. Now we understood that they are, they also realized. We have to live in a proper place. We have to choose a cave and all. So they are coming for a proper family life. So we have to talk about the lifestyle. So I told you, people who lived in that era, right? They actually they did their searching of food and all these things by hunting and roaming. So they hunted uh, the animals. They roamed from one place to another place by you know gathering these food items, as I told you before. Right, so they spent a very you know nomadic life. Nomadic life means you know uh, you know kind of you're moving. You don't know what's next happening. Like you know that kind of a domestic life they had. So when it is really heavy raining and all, they realize they have to go to the caves. They have to settle their lives there. Right. So about if we talk about the families, they had a very small group. Right, fifteen to twenty five members are there in that particular uh, uh, what we call area. Right. So that kind of 50 groups were there, like a group was 50. 15 to 25 members are there. If not, a group is 50 members, right? So the archeologists have found that a group of five members, for a family of five members, right? For a family of five members, 50 square meter of an area was enough. 50 square meter of an area was enough for five members. So where have they found this? They have found this evidence in Church Hill. Church Hill is a place belonging to the history of Stone Age. So this uh, Church Hill is there in Bandaravel, right? So in that place, they have found 50 square meter area for five family members and also around 150 square meters. So two areas. 50 square meters, 150 square meters. Can you understand? So around 25 people can live in that part. Really, right? So just imagine like how, what kind of a group they had. So they know how to live as a group also. They had a family, like they had a certain, uh, you know, what we call the relationship with people. Another evidence is there in Bell and Badi a area of 120 square meters. So remember three things I told you to prove that they have lived in uh, groups. One is 50 square meters area for five members, right? Another place in Churchill, Bandaravela, 150 square meters, right? So around 25 people can live there. Another place in Bell and Badipilas, 120 square meters, right? So from that place, they have found, they have found human skeletons are there. So if human skeletons are found, you have to realize definitely people have survived there. People have spent their life. That's why the human skeletons are there. 
So by recognizing the human skeletons, they do the counting. They do they, they calculate. They come for an assumption. This much of people have lived there. Can you understand? So one day we are also going to be a history, right? Definitely we will die one day and maybe uh, some of the people will excavate us also. Right? Just imagine now uh, most of these COVID patients are taken to these eastern side uh, areas, right? You know, uh, I don't remember the exact name for that particular place. So if one day if they excavated that place, they will, fall, they will find lots of skeletons and all because a group of people have get buried, something like that. So that's also similar for this one. Now, when archaeologists excavate only, they realize. So they have found three evidence to prove the lifestyle of the prehistoric Stone Age man. And if you talk about the uh, food items, the, the food that the people who uh, consumed in that period, so they always, as I told you, they roam, they gather, they hunt, right? They always live in a, uh, an open area. So they can find the food, but they won't by uh, going away, going out. So they use these stone tools and all. Now look at the figure 2.1 in your textbook. You know that it's, it's a tool, geometrical stone tool that they, are, they have made it from the bone of an animal. So they have not left even those parts without any use. They have used it for so many purposes that can be helpful to spend their life in search of food. So earlier, man really survived in for search of food on. But nowadays, how many needs and wants we have come for? A lot of things that we are getting into the worldly life. But earlier, the man was spending his or her own life, the whole life, in search of food for surviving their life. So you can see a very uh, meaningful diagram given in page 15, diagram 2.2. So it says that, read those things, very important. It was a custom of the prehistoric man to bury the dead body of a family member or a relative who lived with them in the same cave in which he or she had lived. So I'll talk about the burial of bodies also. Evidence has been found that after some time, they exhumed the skeletons and applied red color, brown stones on them and performed a kind of a ritual activity. So these kind of rituals, if you, you know, like for nowadays, it's like foolish because we never uh, take bodies and do these things. But there are still, there are a group of people in, in the world, in our world, we have a particular area still it's, uh, it's like you know the world has tell not to go to that place when every country is telling don't go there there are people who kill the people and use them for food and all kind of zombies you know so it's restricted because they are the people who are living a very a different life they don't know what's happening in the world outside they are also still in that early periods following their ancestors rituals and all their cultures their food habits their lifestyle right so when I talk about the burial system, now see little by little we are coming step by step, how they came, what kind of food they had, what kind of tools they used, and now we are coming for the burial system. Listen, now I told you they walked, they gathered, they roamed, they hunted to find this food. So evidences show that this Stone Age period man has walked seven kilometers per day to search food. Can you understand? And some of them had a very temporary life in their caves, right? Sometimes they had to move from one place to another. If they found some other better environmental uh, climatic zones, they moved there. So temporary life, like, you know, uh, like the government servants, they do transfers and all, think like that. Then you can easily remember, right? So in sometimes when, the, when one of the member or one of the relative, they die, what these people do? They bury that body inside the cave itself. Can you understand? They bury it, right? So what they do next is, what they do next is, they take the dead body, they take the uh, skeletons and they color. As I told you in the previous thing, they color. They color it and they do some rituals for those dead people. So these evidence were found about the skeletons. They were found in Kitulgala, Belilena. In Belilena, in Kitulgala. Remember the place? Belilena in Kitulgala. So note it down. Belilena in Kitulgala. So in that place, they have found that 12 skeletons were there. So 12 skeletons means it's a considerable amount, right? 
because it can prove that people were surviving there. Somebody has died and they have uh, done these burial systems. Right? Another one, 30 skeletons, nine skeletons in different ages were discovered in Pahi Angal. So see, three evidences are given here. What are those? One is 12 skeletons in Belilena Kitulgala. Right? Second one is in Bella and Badipilasa, 30 skeletons belonging to the Stone Age, nine skeletons belonging to different ages were found in Pahi Angala. 12 skeletons in Belilena, 30 skeletons in Bella and Badipilasa, nine skeletons in Pahi Angala. Take it to your mind. Can you understand? So you have to understand everything. If you understand only, you can remember. If you don't try to memorize, don't try to memorize. If you try to memorize, no point. If, if Even if you're listening to a song, if you understand the meaning, it's easy for you. But if you try to memorize hardly, it's not that easy, right? It's not that easy. So that's about the, uh, what we call the lifestyle. So if we go to the food, food. Now, already I had discussed about the food, right? Food is not something that new now. I have already told how they collect the food, how they, uh, what we call, uh, consume what kind of animals, what kind of plants and all these things. But we have to talk deeper because you can get essay questions to explain the food style of early historic man. That means the Stone Age people, sorry, Stone Age people. Particularly, they can mention. Briefly give an introduction for the food habits of the Stone Age man. Right? So there are certain, uh, you know, uh, proofs. Proofs are there about the food also. The people who lived in Stone Age, they have, uh, they have lived in caves. Sometimes some are temporary life. Uh, some lived in the lowland dry zone caves. Some lived in the wet zone caves, right? So when I come to dry zone, the food is not the same in the wet zone. When I come to wet zone, it's not the same for dry zone. So certain evidences show that this man has hunted animals. What are the animals? Buffaloes, wild boars, black bears, right? spotted deers, right? Uh, here, these are the animals. Stag, the fishers. So these kind of animals were hunted, right? Squirrel, mongoose, wild fowl, monkey, the cat, python. Likewise, several different, different kinds of animals. So when you are describing or when you're writing an essay type answer, Make sure you describe very detailed. Try, try to remember these animals. Wild boar, black bear, buffalo, spotted deer, right? Porcupine, rabbits, giant squirrel, monkey. So these kind of animals were very common for their food consumption, right? So they have eaten the freshwater fishers also. So fishers is something that contains full of protein. So they have identified that. So that's why we also consume because our ancestors did that. So we have no doubt we can uh, assure that. So because these evidences prove people consumed it only, nowadays also people follow that, right? So they take these fishes from some lakes, sometimes from the pools, water pools and all like that. And they consume it. So we don't know whether they did, you know, cooking, frying and all. But in any method, they have consumed it. Maybe in the beginning, they might have consumed raw even. We don't know. We can't tell properly. Because you know that, as I told you, in that man was wild. He just consumes raw, right? So after that, they might have realized, okay, why, why don't we burn this and eat? Why don't we fry this and eat? Likewise, they have think, right? So remember, when we talk about the food styles, remember the animals, remember that fish, right? And other than that, remember some plant foods also. What are the plant foods? You see, breadfruit, right? Breadfruit. Even nowadays, people consume the Sri Lankan, one of the famous food, breadfruit. Can you understand? So it, uh, breadfruit is one. Uh, wild plantains, right? Uh, then what else? Additionally, they have mentioned some seeds, okay? Uh, starch seeds, starch yams and all. The gonala, katuala. So ala means the potato, right? So ala means yam, potatoes. So gonala. That is, the, the other word is coming from the Sinhala language. Then Katuala, then seeds of the Kitul, kernel of Dotalu. So remember these names, not difficult. Just think, if you can remember burger, pizza, submarines and all, this is also possible, not hard. You try it. 
the starch foods they ate were bread fruits plantains right bread fruit plantains and all then some other starch yams gonala katuwala kitul right then kernel of dothalu these are the evidences to show the food items right so don't think your book is having completely full of notes it's completely full of data full of past history you have to break the points and you have to see them and also i told about oysters also if you remember so prehistoric man they had the habit of consuming this snails oysters right so they were very uh, common for them they they found these uh, abundantly in the lagoons and all can you understand so they they really like this like nowadays how we eat these meat items they really it was like a favorite dish for them so they walked very far distance they went from uh, one place to another in search of these foods because it was something interesting for them so these evidences are there in kitulgal belilena in kitulgal belilena archaeologists they have found that people had the habit of eating this snails animals as i mentioned you and also oysters and some of the uh, plant herbals the herbal plants herbal plants right so under food style remember the types of foods other than that all the other words you can put it by yourself even like you know you can add, add some more words and you can tell people eat, eat this thing so they are giving marks for the things that you mention particularly the food items you mention they are checking whether you have mentioned them correctly can you understand so that's how the food style of the stone age man clear and the next thing is about the technology as i told you in the beginning they had a very good creative thinking ability they knew that they need some tools to do their activities so what happened they improved their technology and before that i want to tell you up to now we have come across several diagrams i'll revise you again remember the diagram of pahyangala cave remember the uh, stone tools that were shown in page 14 right and remember another diagram which is given in page 16 a bead of belonging to prehistoric habitation made of the bone of an animal so that means they have hunted animal and with the bone of an animal they have made a uh, what we call a bead a bead they have made so that picture keep it in your mind clear now technology right so i told you stone tools are basically coming under technology for this part right they created uh, different types of stone tools maybe for their business business in the sense for their earnings for their survival uh, then for their kitchen tools uh, for uh, killing the animals hunting them likewise so some stone tools were found in gem mines in ratnapura as i told you in the beginning two places ratnapura gem mines and iranamadu formation right that is two evidential places stone tools so they have found different different shapes some stone tools are small some stone tools are small right uh, some are uh, kind of you know hard hard and big so you can use it for some hard works and other activities can you understand uh and uh, the some stone tools were made by the uh, not exactly stone they were made by the animal bones and not right using the animal bones so everything had a very important factor what is that factor they had a geometrical shape geometrical shape means you just imagine earlier man had a knowledge on geometry they know like what shape they have to make what size what kind of a width the stone tool should have everything they had done from their mind mind calculation so they had really a vast picture of what they are doing what they are doing but we don't know where they learned it from that's really a miracle nobody was educated at that at that time nobody taught them everything they did from the experience and the knowledge of what they have done what they have seen can you understand sometimes they use the bones of the humans the dead ones likewise they did they somehow did something in, to improve the technology because they need the tools without tools you can't do like even nowadays if you go to for a kitchen you know you want the knife you know the spoon you need those tools right without that you can't do suppose if you didn't have you will put the uh, effort to make something else 
by using some other equipments, you try it. So that's your ability. Clear? That is about technology a little bit. So just look at the diagram, figure 2.4, page 16. Skeletons are there. Human skeletons, which represent the prehistory in Sri Lanka, belong to the Mesolithic era. It's another era. Remember, this belongs to the Mesolithic era discovered in Potana Cave close to Segiria. The photograph is courtesy of the Postgraduate in Institute of Archaeology. So they have to mention where and how they got this picture. So it proves that human skeletons. So with these human skeletons, our intelligent archaeologists, what did they do? They discovered and they researched about the physical body of humans as well. Right. So we'll, I'll teach you what is that also. So when we talk about technology, there is another small part about the tool size and all. So they have made tools with four to five centimeters in length. Right. And to make the tools colorful, to make them more attractive and to make them more identical, they have used some colored stones, kahanda, little of kahanda stones to make these micro stone tools. Right. They have uh, take some other tools to cut and shape the tools what they are making. Right. Some tools were geometrical shapes. Some tools were non-geometrical shapes. But most of the tools were having the purpose of hunting the animals cutting, scratching, chopping, and uh, digging. I told you, earlier man lived their life for the existence of their survival in search of food only. That's why major part of these tools were useful for the purposes like cutting, chopping, digging, and all. Because they need those, basically. That is important. So they made the stones for grinding purposes. They used the granites and all. So if they ask you a question like this, what is the purpose of making these stone tools? Remember to mention the main purpose was for hunting animals, for cutting, for scratching, chopping, digging, and also for grinding purposes. Everything, if you look as a whole, for having food, to get food. That's the basic. That's the basic need they had. Right? So that's how the Stone Age peoples uh, technology, the prehistoric man's, prehistoric man's technology. So in prehistoric part, I taught you the settlements, the, uh, the climatic zones, the time periods, right? Then I told you about the settlements where they made in the caves and all, right? I taught you about the lifestyle, how many people live as a group. Then I taught you about the food style, about the technology. And now, with the diagram 2.4 in page number 16, we can come to the people's physical body. So I told you now, archaeologists won't keep the data what they get just. They will do some researches to make it a more beneficial one. So once they found the human skeletons, they discovered that the size of the people's body belonging to this stone age differs from male and female. They found the grown male, a grown male, an adult male, is 174 centimeter in height. Right? So they don't, now don't think now they have taken one body and, uh, you know, uh, finalize this. Two to three bodies or maybe a group of bodies. They, they do a vast research and only they give this data. And they have found most of the female bodies, the female uh, bodies were not more than 166 centimeter in height. So what you understand, men's were more stronger, like more, more capable than the women's. That's why men were engaging in searching food process because they have to do a long journey of walking, as I told you, seven kilometer per day. They have to do a long journey, journey of walking. They have to do a long journey of roaming. And they should have a very good, strong capability of doing hunting. That's why we consider man is stronger than women for earning purposes and all. Right? But still some people, there are a group of people who say women are stronger. That's why women are capable of giving birth for a child. Of course, both the human beings are actually capable of doing everything. Everything, it depends on your mind, your thoughts. Right? So. Let's come to the lesson and go on. 
like you know man is 174 cm women is 166 cm so don't think these measurements as you know just please keep in your mind sometimes these also can come to your mcq questions they can ask you like who is what what's the height of a uh, man belonging to the uh, what we call this era stone age era or we can say prehistoric era so they can give you some answers mcq's answers right different 174 166 186 just to have an idea 174 is men 166 is women and also with these skeletons archaeologists they have found the teeth of the dead bodies the teeth so most of their teeth were big in very big in size because you know that they consume very heavy foods like very uh, natural food so they need some capacity to bite and chop and grind them and you know to digest them so very big teeth they had remember very big teeth very wide nose now you can have an image of that person like you know the homo sapiens and all wide nose a wide chin right so their brain the man's the male brain was 1600 cubic centimeter female brain 920 cubic centimeter so don't think that now man has more knowledge than women it's not like that it depends on the size of the brain so size of the brain can't decide about the knowledge and all right so we don't know who had the best knowledge but uh, basically we can tell the man had the best knowledge in this case because they are the people who made the tools they uh, they went from place to place and they identified the climates and they realized where they, they can survive and they found the caves, right? So likewise, uh, we can come for a certain assumption. So just have a memory. Man is taller than women, 174, 166. Brain of man is bigger than women, 1,600, 920. Everything should be like a chart in your mind, right? And the prehistoric man survived for 35 to 40 years not much long 35 to 40 years prehistoric man survived in the world in the country that's the maximum or we can say the maximum lifespan maximum lifespan can you understand so that's about the um, what we call the physical body physical body can you understand right so now i have discussed about lifestyle food style technology physical body lifestyle food style technology physical body so even if you get an essay question about describe briefly about the lifestyle of prehistoric man, if they ask a question like that, remember, you should highlight these things. What are the things you should highlight? Now listen carefully. Important points that you should mention for your exam paper. What are those? What is prehistoric era? First, you should tell that. Right? Then you have to tell how do you know that prehistoric man survived what are the evidential places as i told you some places you have to mention those in which time period prehistoric man survived the best evidence is the pahiangala it shows that man survived 35000 years ago then you tell about the settlements they made they made settlements near the coastal areas they made settlements near the wet zone caves give examples give examples lots of examples are there i told you, you know coastal areas outdoor camps are there miniha galkanda boondala patirajavela should tell like that children I had learned a lot now lifestyle you have to come okay these people lived as group everything break into paragraph all the topics you break into paragraph and you describe in your own words this is how people live evidences are there three places are there for the man settled as groups what are the places? What are the places you remember now? You have to tell it yourself. The Church Hill. Church Hill, right? It's in Bandaravela. Then another one I told you uh, that around 25 people lived, I told you, right? In that particular place. Then another particular place you know that I told you that? Uh, the Belambadi Pilasa. Belambadi Pilasa, it shows 120 square meters of, a, of an area. So they have found skeletons over there that's the way you have to describe then you can tell about the food items so don't answer this way you are explaining the food you are coming to lifestyle you are again explaining the food you are coming to tools again coming to food don't do that finish one topic then you are clear with that right 
so you had a dot when you're talking about the tools remember you should talk about the technology they are knowledge you had to appreciate that they have done this they have made this size four to five centimeter tools they have made these tools for this purpose what's the purpose hunting cutting chopping cracking digging i told you those purposes right then you have to tell archaeologists found the physical body of men skeletons of people those skeletons were this size man was 174 women was 166 right their brain were like this maximum life span of them were 35 to 40 years likewise you have to explain when you are giving the description on essay question i'll make you to write one answer as well right we'll discuss the last topic rituals rituals means children the formalities that you do after one person died listen very carefully about these rituals they have get a clear information they have found clear informations about the ritual that they have done for the dead bodies i told you some of them bury the dead bodies in the cave itself right so they have found archaeologists have found there was a cave uh, in ravanalla which was closer to badulla in that cave it shows there are evidences that they have done certain rituals for a skull how has how have they done listen carefully have your imagination they have take a skull and they have divided it into two parts right okay and uh, they have rubbed it from some brown stones or red color stones right they have painted it with the red color brown color uh, stones right so that's how they have done their ritual i don't know why they did that like after a man die they are breaking their skull in the sense like you are waiting until that man's skull come right we listen happen at one night you no know, it's long process decaying process no? but they have done that so one person can tell it's about their uh, less knowledge right they are not educated one one of the group can tell no it's their rituals they might had some idea they are not mad to do just right maybe something was there maybe they might have think their uh, their knowledge or their soul will rest in peace their soul won't come back to get back the soul we don't know it's according to them maybe they even don't know why they did they did because for fun all right you know or as uh, for they thought don't know like our ancestors did or as they thought no it's dead body now it doesn't have any feelings like that so these evidences were found in badulla in pahiyangala all those evidences are showing dead bodies were buried and they were kept for some time until they decay after that after decaying process happened they have taken these skeletons and they have done these things what i told you now so this is not only in badulla not only in pahiyangala also in batadombalena kuruvita write down the name batadombalena kuruvita right so all those dead bodies have shown similarities for the people with the people i told you stone age people we are talking now but some of the bodies had the similarities belonging to these aborigines the vedda the vedda community right they had the similarities belonging to that period now have a look on the diagram 2.5 you sh it shows the sabargamo province in the ratnapura district it's a prehistoric symmetry this diagram can come prehistoric symmetry right this is belonging to the uh, ranchamadama government school which is in ratnapura district sabargamo province right so this symmetry is used around 3350 years ago 3350 years ago this symmetry has been used so that's all for today's topic explanation right so this i'm going to give you a question for you to answer related to the uh, prehistoric era but before that i'm giving you a short time to read the complete note until ritual and make clear what we have learned so far right so we'll give you around 8 uh, minutes once again yes right classify and pass up questions according to the time determination the grave soil layer of iranamadu deposit foundation in the area of patirajavela where stone tools has been discovered 
belonging to prehistoric era is? What is the answer? I got one answer, right? You see. Any other answers? According to the time determination, you don't have a deposit formation foundation. Patiraja <laughs> Villa. Yeah, stone tools have been discovered in prehistoric. Yes, answer is. 125,000 years ago. Where is it mentioned? Where is it mentioned? Yes, yes. Pahi 38,000. Yes. 125,000 years ago. We know that I told you in the beginning. Man, human habitation in Sri Lanka started 125,000 years ago. So that was, I told you, first evidence. Iranamadu formation, Ratnapura Gemmai. A place which is considered as an area where much information has been found regarding the lifestyle of people in prehistoric era. What is that place where you can find evidences related to prehistoric man? Okay, very good. This, some children are very active. Yes. Correct answer. I got two. What about the others? Yes. Pahyangal. I told you, remember that place? Pahi Angala. That's what I told you. Look at the picture inch by inch. Everything is important there. Pahi Angala is the best. I told 38,000 years. I told the year. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Everyone answering. Right. Good. Next one. Clear archaeological evidence regarding the use of iron in Sri Lanka. Read the question again. Clear archaeological evidence regarding the use of Iron in Sri Lanka has been found for the first time during which period? Now we learned only one era, but according to the knowledge what you have. So, yeah. Okay, right, good. Getting good answers. Proto-historic. So you, you have not yet learned that, not yet learned. Right? Okay. So like this, uh, I'll be sending the tute at last only. I'll just show you the questions, possible question. So we'll do the Easy one now. Right. Do this question now. Question number five. Do it now. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, do it now. Prehistoric era related to prehistoric man. Start now. Uh, you can write the question anyway. Tutors will be sent if you want. You can put the question number. You can write a uh, unit two classified past paper question and put the question number and you can write or as you can write the question. No problem. So look at the marks and write. I'll give you the original answers. Be honest to yourself. That is the first thing. Write what you know. Take the support of your book. That's it. And one more thing, children, 
I have given first one three environmental zones. I taught you. I taught you eight zones. Three marks are given. Don't be you know extraordinary and write eight. No need. Okay. Examiner won't give eight marks for writing eight places. If you write eight even, you get three marks. If you write three even, you get three marks. So write only three. Then second one to outdoor dwellings. They have asked. So remember outdoor that word I told you when I'm explaining outdoor camps and all. So there are four marks are given, right? Four marks are given. They are asking two. So two in the sense, uh, you have to tell about the coastal area outdoor dwellings and uh, cave outdoor dwellings also, right? That's how they give two two. Uh, third one, five marks. You have to take two examples only, and you have to explain those two examples. How the nature of food of the people lived in prehistoric era of Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. See, so one of them is telling. I don't want to mention the name. Once in my IT paper, I wrote five. When they asked three, Madam gave me zero marks for that question. That's the thing that happens. Some examiners are there. You know, they think, ah, okay, you wrote this much, no? So you are going to make me tired of marking, right? So wait till I'll do, and they cut the marks. Because they also want to mark the paper quickly and go home, right? So don't write too much and this thing. But for the six marks question, five marks question, write a lot. No problem. Write somewhat description, descriptive answers. Uh, yeah. Fourth question, six marks. So you have to describe. You have to describe. I'll give you another three minutes. Okay, let's start the discussion now. First one, we'll take uh, Shamla Jifri. So don't worry, don't be scared, don't get panic. Everyone here is not someone genius, right? We all have come here to learn something. Tell me your answer for Roman number one. Three environmental zones where prehistoric man lived in Sri Lanka.
Yes. Shamla Jiffy. What's your answer? At least uh, put in a chat box your answer. Okay, got it. Semi arid dry zone. So, yes, that is semi arid dry zone. She's telling. Okay. So, you have to include one word there lowland semi arid zone. So, just think of the, so just refer the uh, environmental zones. We don't have anything, a semi arid dry zone. We have lowland semi arid zone. Okay, next one intermediate dry zone okay lowland intermediate dry zone lowland intermediate dry zone right another one any of the uh, eight you can write down lowland arid zone wet highland mountain zone wet mountain zone okay, everyone check your answers uh, then lowland intermediate uh, don't write just wet zone, dry zone and all. Completely write the correct thing. If not, they, they want you mark. Wet mountain zone. Wet highland mountain zone. Yes, I'm getting good answers now. Lowland intermediate dry zone. Yes, any of these three, you are getting three marks. Okay, good. Children are good. They're not shy. They talk well. Next one. Name two outdoor dwellings in the coastal area and... Two cave dwellings are pretty considered to have lived. So that is there. And if you were unable to find, you know that it's there in page 14, outdoor and uh, the cave dwellings. Yes, let's see if answers are coming here. Some of them say outdoor camps in the coastal area, Bundala, Patiraja Vela. Yes, outdoor camps in coastal area, Bundala, Patiraja Vela. Correct answers. Another one. Miniha Galkanda Bundala. Yes, that's also correct. That's enough. Then cave dwellings against another answer I got. Very good. Pahiangala Batadobalena. Cave dwellings are Pahiangala Batadobalena. What else? Kitulgala Belilena, Potana, Aligala. All these. Very good. Very good. Minhan. Uh, who is this? Lubna, Imna, uh, Hishma. No, he what? What? Uh, Hishma, 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 Pikra. Yes, good. Good answers. So if you have written them, you can get four marks for cave dwellings uh, for a coastal area. Um, sorry, outdoor dwelling, outdoor dwelling. You're getting four marks total. Third one, I'll give you the answer because it's a descriptive one. Write it down, take it to your head and write it down. Point out with two examples how the nature of food of people lived in prehistoric era of Sri Lanka was formed according to the environment i told you, you know according to the environment how they changed right uh, i'll send you the answer to the group i'll explain now i'll send you the answer to the group if not time taking and all when i'm explaining the food style i told you something remember the names of the food that is the plus point for you earlier people they ate what animals plants and also they ate some yams i told you yams so remember and mention they hunted the animals like buffalo, black bear, wild bear, uh, deer, porcupine, stag, giant, squirrel, and all. They ate the uh, plants like wild breadfruit, wild plantains. You have to mention that. If you have mentioned, they are giving marks for those things. Then you have to mention they ate the yams like gonala, katuala, the kitul seeds, and all. Very good. I forgot one thing. She reminded me. Uh, that is the fish, right? The fish. Fish is the uh, protein completely uh, full of protein and all and they found these ones in the lagoons and all and specifically i mentioned about the oysters uh, yeah starch so see she's she, she has mentioned here Ibna has mentioned here wild bread is breadfruit is for starch so you have to decide them people in the ancient people they ate the wild breadfruit to get the starch to get protein they ate the fishes they uh, they were uh, very much interested in finding uh, oysters and snails Likewise, you have to mention. So children, I'll send you the answer to the group for Roman number uh, three and four so you can describe it. The fourth one, they are telling about experience to So rituals means you know that after they die, what they do. 
so you know that they did some nonsense right they break the skull into two they colored it and uh, they danced the devil dance they over right but you have you don't you can't write it like that they won't give us you should explain in a nice way right the, like you have respect their ritual because they did it for some purpose no so you have to in the in the proto historic era there were uh, uh, burials these burial grounds were found in you had to mention the places where were the burial grounds found yes i'm getting answers colored the bones in red and brown very good where were these burial grounds uh, found famously like you know pahiyangala badul batadobalena yes very good so those places you have to mention you had to mention what kind of stones they used to color yes right and the, some of their bodies were similar similar to the uh, aborigines the badda community so see how easy remember history papers are easy because they can't change the history they will keep on repeating and asking the same question you should be talented to guess what's next can you understand right so that's all for today's session i'll send the answer for roman number 3 and 4 please uh, write it down in that particular place where you have writ uh, written your answer uh, or else if you have written already double check your answer right you have to work hard children you, you this this all over is yours right this is your exam you should show the dedication if you think you can do it because now you are in a very 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 bad situation even teachers are not there to push you and you you don't have even your good friends who are there with you who pushed you for exams who made you always encouraging to study they are not closer by you they all are in phones and like you know you contact through mobile but it's not that thick right so it's all your hard work you have to do right and finally it's the future can't tell reads like because of pandemic because of uh, no connection no internet you can't tell that you have to you, it's very big challenge for your life and definitely if you do work hard definitely you're going to get a bright future right keep in your mind and work right uh, so i send you some uh, what we call the questions easy questions that means the possible questions to answer today's lesson questions i'll crop pens in because i won't send the pdf now if i send the pdf now uh, it's not that correct so i crop the questions what you are able to answer and i'll send you right uh, inshallah today or sometimes later after sometimes i'll send you uh, so make sure you are active in the group refer the reply the messages also if you are missing any sessions pre inform me so that i'll send you the recording but recordings will be mailed actually so make sure you have to send me your mail addresses and all if you really wanted the recording to re listen again right and if you have questions again while answering the question please whatsapp me your question right i'll help you in possible way remember your homework homework map marking read the prehistoric era completely and try to explain to one of your friends that will be more blessed for you you know you will be blessed if you explain something to another person okay do you have any questions okay no questions no questions okay right good happy if you can it's clear if it is clear good children then go and have your dinner have a nice time god bless you stay home and stay safe assalam